looking after yourself. Oh, you have to. Have like a hundred percent. Like even with a lot of the mental health stuff. Like we held a session a couple of weeks ago. I think three weeks ago now, and it was like wellness and well, like a well-being wellness session, mm-hmm. pretty much with run by the leisure group. So me, Larry, Kate, and Haley. Perhaps we just put on pizzas and virtually just did like a triple H session. So do you know what that is? Explain. So the Richmond Football Club, they yeah. started doing this pretty much as they started becoming successful. So the season, I think it was a season, like the pre-season from when they started to turn their season around, mm-hmm. where they actually started to become pretty successful, yep. they did a triple H session. So pretty much you... You have a choice. So you can stand up and say a hero, a hardship, or a highlight in your life. So yep, you can either that's say... That's triple H. Yeah. So that's the triple hero, H. Hero, hardship... And hardship and... A highlight. Highlight. Hero, so, hardship, and highlight. we pretty much... Because I was talking to you before, like Dylan Friends, he had Brendan Ellis yep. on. And... That's where he spoke about that. Yeah. And that's when I was sitting there. I was like, oh my God, this is like incredible. Mm. Like, I feel like mental health and this kind of stuff sort of just... Obviously, it doesn't get pushed aside, but it's not in between players. Like, you can talk to coaches or a psychologist, but mm. really, we come to footy and I just Same. know... Together. Say, so yeah. if you're a player, I just know you as a player. I don't know yeah. you as a person mm. type thing. So, we really wanted to, like, necessarily make this season more about bringing everyone together and actually getting to yeah, know someone for, like, not just a player, but yeah. as a person as well. So, that's pretty much why we wanted to do it. And it was, like, the biggest success. Like... It wow. literally made me so, so happy. Like, all of us girls were, like, hugging at the end. We're like, oh, my God, that was <laughs> so great. Like, that was the best thing. And, like, had so many messages. Like, yeah. almost everyone that attended was like, thank you so much. Because you'd learn so much about other yeah, people, well, right? And even your best, your, like you said, your, um, even the people that you think you know really well, you actually learn something new. Oh, my and God. And there's, like, a bit of, you have more of a connection. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just, like, there were tears. There were laughs. Like, there was just. All the emotions. Oh, everything you can think of. But, like. Like I was saying earlier in the podcast, like we're all so close this year. Yeah. I think it started from that session, which has now just grown so much more. And like we want to do another one because it was just so mm-hmm. good to like know something about someone. Yeah. But nah, it was... Well, who's your hero? Mm, I said my nonna and nonna. Yeah. I'm Italian and Portuguese. Um, but they are just so beautiful love them so much they helped us so yeah. much as like a family yeah in the past they few years migrated so. here over from sorry they migrated here over from italy yeah, yeah. so nonno came over from sicily yeah like when they first yeah. migrated then nonna's from here but she's oh, just yeah yeah, yeah. she's nonna <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah so i reckon nonna and nonna were definitely my heroes as well as my brother love my brother Lovely. yeah yeah that's so sweet who's your hero I don't know. I, I pull heroes whenever kind of the life kind of the moment I need them. Mm. So like the probably the biggest kind of life changing event I had for me was making the decision to move over here to Perth mm. from Adelaide, and then I actually moved over for an unpaid internship, and I got copped yeah. a lot of heat for it. And then everyone's like, "Oh, you're moving so far, blah blah blah." And I was like, "Well, no, same thing, you know." My unon, my grandfather, yeah, he moved over from Italy and it was like thousands of kilometers on a ship, you know, like yeah. no phone, like he came with the story, came with a bag and then all this sort of stuff, you know, no money or whatever. Yeah, literally. Oh, and I'm just moving from a different city, like yeah. it's not a big of a deal, like, you know, so kind of put thing in, into a bit more of a yeah. perspective. So I just came, like, you know, doesn't, you know, try not to make it too big of a deal because then if, I, if I'm stressing about moving and it doesn't make it the whole thing more enjoyable, I don't get, you know. I'm less like, oh, I miss out on the opportunity of like the internship provider. Like, oh, yeah. it's just an internship. I'm not getting paid and I have to move to do this, you know. You always got to be positive. Exactly. You got to say, like, pull the, yeah, take the best things out. So even that, and a lot of my work ethic comes from like dad, obviously. And then even getting old, living further away now from like brother and sister, you kind of realize how much you take their company for granted. Yeah. You miss, miss like, even like you go for Christmas and, it's like just you just talk shit of like yeah. your brother or like cousins and stuff, and then you know, my sister's now living in China. Oh my! What? Yeah. What's she doing there? I'm teaching like oh young God, little, like, like they like an English school. If I'm sorry if I get this wrong, if she's listening, but it's an English school. But they're obviously trying to they're learning how yeah, to like yeah, speak yeah. like Western culture. So I think they're an upper class like kind of family. Mm. 
send the kids here and they learn like Western culture and this sort of stuff. And it's like a pre like yeah. preschool yeah. Like, age group and they're learning like sitting down at the table and they teach them how like use knife and fork Aww. and then the manners and like so and one of the stories she was telling mum, mum told me is that they they had this little dinner set up and then like they had like a, a male and a female kid would come in and they, and the little boy would pull the chair out for the girl to sit in and all this sort of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, mum was telling me, I was like, restored yeah. in humanity. Anyway, yeah, and she got, anyway, she was over for the whole COVID thing and she ended up getting stuck and she had to work her right over here. Mm. And then we all ended up like, like, Gabby, or my sister left. And then she left, oh, did she leave first or did I leave first? I think I left first and she was looking to leave. And anyway, so we all left pretty soon and then got my brother's the youngest, he stayed. And then within a couple of months, we'll come back because obviously COVID yeah, broke down. It was like, yeah. oh, I might as well just go back home. And then we're all back home. Mum's like, oh, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> what's everyone doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was like, you need, yeah. So family's a big, big one, especially like, I think even like Italian, you know, Italian families all kind of, you grow, you spend so much time with them. You do, and when they go away or you lose them for whatever reason, you kind of puts it in perspective how important they are in your life because yeah. you're around them so much, a big influence. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You don't realize how, like, I remember when I was, when we could travel, me and Lockie would always go to Bali for two, three weeks. Mm. And even in there, I'm like, I, like, I was having the best time of my life, but it's like, I miss my family. <laughs> like, <laughs> two I, weeks. Yeah, like, I'm, I get so, like, I miss my family. Like, oh, really? Yeah, like, I, yeah, it's crazy, but. I'm bad. Self confessed, I'm really bad with that. Yeah. Like, I, like, would have been a couple, but. Like, I called, or oh, sorry, Casey called mum and dad, my mum and dad mm. on the weekend. And I was like, I got pulled out, like, cause I was d- like in the zone, like yeah. doing stuff and just like, talk to your parents. And I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> I'm real bad. Hi, mom. Sorry, mum and dad. Hi, dad. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> no, but I'm like, I was like, cause I'm not in the mood. I was like, I'm not, yeah. Self-confessed, not very nice, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Who's some of your idols? Cause you asked me before we came on. My idols? Yeah. Like, do you have a sporting, like with all this. Rocks. Like, the Rock? Yeah, Dwayne Johnson, mate. Why not? Love him. Yeah. Like, he is like, the hard. He's so, like, charismatic. Find Did a you person used to watch him in WWE? Oh, no. I missed out on that. <sighs> I wasn't, like, that age group because he was, like, the 90s. I should have been. Like, I was late on the, the WWE. WWE. Oh, I was huge. I was really, like, because he, he got, it was a period when the 90s he was big. And then he went away, like, in mm. 2010. And then he came back. And yeah. That's when I kind of stopped watching after that because I was like, oh, yeah, other things to do. So he came on like late, but I was like, nah, but I liked, I liked, he's so charismatic. Like everyone, find a person who doesn't like The Rock. Bar, yeah, bar what's his name? Um, uh, the guy from Fast and Furious, Vin Diesel. Vin, Vin Diesel. Diesel, him and him, yeah, they both don't get along because their egos are too big. Yeah. Probably. He works bloody, he's like number one highest paid actor who is, well, he came from wrestling, so that's acting itself, but like mm. not really a trained actor. Like he does all these movies, makes so much money. And he's, you know, he started from nothing. Now it's just like I crazy. know. There's Huge. a you heard about this show that is like in America, like a come at what stations on, but it's like called The Young Rock, but it's set in the future, right? So it's so it's set in 2030. Rock's going for the presidency. Oh my god! And he's doing like back, like they're going back over his like yeah. they're doing. So the TV show is a TV show in itself. So they're going back in time as like a young actor of The Rock going through his like school years, and then he's doing like an interview about that time. That's it's true. crazy. Well, can't I can't get it yet. Can't never get it yet. watched him in like WWE and stuff. Oh, you see, you see highlights and stuff, but right. never got <laughs> me to and my brother used to like full blown be like WWE oh, yeah. obs- until I found out it was fake and I <laughs> cried. Oh, it's not really fake. Oh, but like I dead set thought it was like hell in a cell jumping off the top like <laughs> oh that's would... real they still jump off onto a thing oh but like the chairs hitting him and stuff like i was still... all for this it's, it's still a chair like it's just metal that's weaker you're still know, getting hit but once you know it's not like in the punches the, only, like... the thing that gets me is the fact that it's scripted like the yeah. people who are like you're like they'll go, <laughs> you're losing tonight and i was like that's what we're yeah me out. literally spewing but yeah so the rock probably in terms of like Terms, you, anyone, anyone really who has achieved more than what I have, 